everybody, it's Sinead on a beautiful day in London with free tours by foot and today I'm back in the City of London. Now some of you will have seen my City of London tour and thank you for your lovely complimentary comments and your subscriptions but of course there's 2,000 years of history to get through here so impossible to do it all in one tour but today I specifically want to explain to you the difference between the City of London and Greater London. And for that, I'm currently in the city of Westminster, but when I turn and walk right past the monument I'm about to show you, the monument to Temple Power here at Fleet Street, this marks the official point where we leave the city of Westminster and officially enter into the city of London. So I just want to show you a few more of the distinguishing features about the area. So how you know you're in the city of London and not just Greater London. And it's pretty obvious uh, once you know how. Uh, in fact, don't be alarmed if you weren't aware of this because I believe up to 80% of Londoners don't realize there is a distinct difference between both. Stay tuned for the information to clue you in on this incredible place and now, one of the richest square miles in the world. So I want to start by showing you, this is what's called the Monument to Temple Bar. And this is on Fleet Street, ladies and gents. And you'll see the dragon there on top, that bronze griffin or dragon. Some call it a griffin, some call it a dragon. Uh, this, the dragon is a symbol of the city of London. So you know you're entering and exiting whenever you pass through one of the dragons. But this is one of the major routes, and I guess one of the most important routes of uh, transferring from the city of Westminster to the city of London. It was originally uh, the main trading route, of course, between the Tower of London and the Palace of Westminster, and of course, St. Paul's Cathedral to the Palace of Westminster. So officially, when you walk past here, that's when you enter into the city of London the 2,000 year old Roman city, which is only 1.1 square mile. Now it's the financial district and the history of it dates all the way back to AD 43. And this is where the Romans landed 2,000 years ago. And they set up an incredible trading center. And as the Romans always do, they set up a wall that was built right around the entire city. Um, initially it was only 1.1 square miles, now it's about 2 square miles, but it's officially known as the square mile. So the Romans, as they did, they built bridges and trading routes all over the world, so it became the financial centre of the entire of London. And it's the very reason that London exists today. So we're going to head past now in just a second, but I want to show you some of the distinguishing marks that will show you exactly that you're in the city of London. And it has its own police force, it has its own Lord Mayor, its own governing rules, so it pays its own taxes to fund that police force, and own set of rules. So uh, quite immeasurable differences. And it's governed by a chap called William Russell. He's known as the Right Honourable Lord Mayor of the City of London. And in an age-old ceremony, on Lord Mayor's Day, there's usually a very ceremonial, beautiful parade welcoming the new city of London Mayor. The Queen herself will have to stop her royal carriage at this part before she enters into the city of London to actually gain permission from the new Lord Mayor of the city of London. And he will descend his carriage from which the Queen will emerge from hers and he will approach her with a sword. He'll hand it to her and it's all to signify that she is now under the protection of the Lord Mayor of London in the city of London. So let's walk straight past it. So we are now officially in the 2000 year old Roman city. So welcome to the city of London, originally known as the City of Londinium. Now I'm just going to zoom in on Fleet Street there because this is another character or distinguishing feature that will tell you you're in the City of London. 
There is the City of London crest. And it is essentially two dragons holding up the crest of St. George. So it has its own crest and its own flag. So getting back to that again, its own police force, its own Lord Mayor, its own governing body, its own sets of rules, its own police force and its own Lord Mayor. Now another distinguishing feature up here, I will find the crest and zoom in on it for you. But what you're about to see in just a moment is these red, white and black poles. Now this also determines that you're in the city. So it's as easy as looking actually at, I think I'll be okay to cross here, looking at the street signs to tell you whether you're in the city of Westminster or the city of London. So 1.1 square mile has only a population of about 9,000 people. Its biggest industry, of course, is it's now the financial district, one of the richest square miles in the world. And the financial district here sees up to 400,000 people commute here into the city of London to work from Monday to Friday. So this is what I'm talking about. So these distinguishing poles you see here determine that you're in the city of London. And if I can get, I don't want to get knocked down by the bus incoming. So I will just give you a little look around here. And I will show you the crest here. It's a bit dirty, but it's two griffins or two dragons holding up the St. George flag. I'll get a cleaner one in just a minute to show you. But it has attracted up to 10 million visitors a year come and visit us here in the city of London. So Greater London comprises of 32 boroughs, one of those boroughs including the city. It has a population of, I believe it's eight and a half million. And the mayor of the city of London is a chap called William Russell. His official title is the Right Honourable Mayor of the City of London. But the mayor of Greater London, who works with the Greater London Authority, is Sadiq Khan. So while poor Sadiq Khan has to go to work, sometimes taking one of the many sand and hair bikes, so the forest bikes around London. And he works in an office and wears a suit. The Right Honourable Lord Mayor of the City of London gets to travel in a spectacular gold carriage. And he works from the Guildhall, which is also situated here in the City of London. And we will be heading towards the Guildhall very shortly. So if you're enjoying the tour so far, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps others discover the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel. We have walks along the Thames, through Westminster, Camden, all over London. Visit our website for more about our tours, our travel tips, and more. We also have virtual tours and channels that focus on DC, New Orleans, New York, and more. Look for free tours by foot wherever you travel. You can support your guide with virtual tips, links in the description, and let us know what else you want to see. Leave a comment below. Now, back to the tour. So you guys, I wanted to pick right back up here before we enter into Guildhall Yard and to show you the stunning church which was built in 1136. This is called the Church of St. Lawrence Jewry, uh, J-E-W-R-Y, and it gets its name because it was built on the site of a former Jewish ghetto. Now this particular building was destroyed during the Great Fire of London in 1666, which as previously mentioned, um, just waiting for the car to pass, um, burnt down 80% of the city of London. So this church was rebuilt um, after the Great Fire in 1666 by the widely regarded architect, well, the Leonardo da Vinci of London, Sir Christopher Wren. 51 churches he built here in London. But the significance to the Right Honourable Lord Mayor of the City of London is this is the Church of the Lord Mayor. 
but right now we're heading into Guildhall Yard and this leads to the actual Guildhall which has been the seat of government of the Corporation of the City of London so essentially the administrative headquarters no please go ahead please go ahead the poor gentleman thinks he's interrupting us you guys uh, the administrative seat of the city of london and the square mile and the local authority for over 800 years now look at this stunning building so in medieval times this area was known for its trials uh, some of the more famous that you might be familiar with was the trial of Lady Jane Grey took place here, the nine day queen. And six years later, her husband's trial, Lord Guilford Dudley, also took place here. So here in the Guildhall, it hosts many events every year, but most notably, the Lord Mayor's Banquet. When the outgoing mayor, is received by the new going mayor who hosts this very elaborate banquet inside the Guildhall here. Now what's also incredible about this area is in 2000 when they were building the extension over here and I'll just show you which was they were excavating to build the City of London Guildhall Art Gallery they found, when they were excavating, the only Roman amphitheatre in London. So that's the building. And right underground here is where they found this incredible amphitheatre. Access of which was only open to the public in 2002. So you can actually visit the only Roman amphitheatre in London. And which opened its doors for the first time in 2000 in years in over two well opened its doors for the first time in 2000 years is what i'm trying to say yep but this amazing place is the seat of the london city of london authority and this is the guild hall and just a short walk around the corner ladies and gents brings us to one of three buildings for the City of London Police. Now, the City of London Police are responsible for the square mile. Uh, one of the smallest territorial police stations in the entire of England and Wales. The force is 1,200 strong with 800 of them uh, police officers. So this is their jurisdiction, the square mile, and the Metropolitan Police are responsible for the 31 boroughs outside. Now, the police, of course, work closely together today through forensic science and computer science, but it was a major contributing factor to the escape of Jack the Ripper, the evading of Jack the Ripper, the authorities in 1888, because in Victorian times, both police forces were in direct competition with each other, a massive amount of jealousy and they would not even be seen on the street together. So if a murder took place in the city of London, this is the city of London police's jurisdiction and the Metropolitan Police wanted nothing to do with it and vice versa. Another reason we believe Jack the Ripper evaded capture, the lack of police cooperation, but not the case today. Uh, technically, as I mentioned, one of the smallest forces in England and Wales. And this is one of their headquarters as it were only three police stations and one fire station in the city of london that fire station is located on tooley street but i just wanted to show you something rather lonely as well oh this has a little tear in my eye have a look at this this is the saint albans church tower standing in the middle of the road separating left to right all on its own what I'm going to do is walk around it just to show you. Now, London was extensively bombed during World War II, but London was also destroyed during the Great Fire of London. And commissioned to rebuild most of the churches was the incredible Sir Christopher Wren. But a lot of these churches couldn't be saved. But some of the existing 
church towers did survive. And this is one, and I'm just gonna get you a better view here. I'm gonna walk down the beautiful Love Lane. What a great name, London tends to name its streets after the activities that went on at the time. So you have around the city of London, Poultry Street, Milk Street, uh, Love Lane. Not entirely sure what happened in Love Lane, but I'll leave that to your imagination. So there is the St. Albans Solo Church Tower, the only part of the building that survived damage. Okay, so we did the City of London Police today. We did the Guildhall. We had a look at the crest of the City of London. We will include a flag of the City of London. So hopefully you have some bit of a better idea of the difference between Greater London and the City of London. But as ever, thank you most sincerely for joining me, ladies and gents. Time for me to have a little gin and tonic here in the uh, Slug and Lettuce. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments section below. Please like and subscribe. Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot on many more walks to come.